red when you are. Okay, so I can go ahead. I'm lying. Okay, Brother Powell, just stand. Just hit line. Just hit that blue. Hit blue. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, right there. Uh -huh. Okay. Seven. We're so thankful that you decided to tune in with us as we worship God in spirit and truth on this seventh day of August 2022. We're uh, praying this morning that uh, all is well with your soul. We're praying for those that are in the hospitals, uh, ICUs, those that are going through trials and tribulations, knowing that God is the God that can do anything. Nothing is too impossible for him. And so we pray for them. And um, we have a brother to come around shortly uh, to pray on behalf of individuals that we know and for the entire world. This morning, we hope you continue to stay tuned in as we deal with temptation, dealing with temptation. We'll see this morning that temptation comes upon all of us. Jesus was tempted in every point, yet without sin. It is when we fall to temptation is when the problem comes in. And so we'll talk about how to do your best to fight against temptation, and if you fall, uh, we are able to have this mediator, Jesus Christ. Uh, he is our counselor uh, that would talk, come between us and God, that would plead our case. And so this morning, in reference to temptation, we want to start out with 753. 753 temptation and tried we are often made to wonder. We understand it better by and by. 753. Let us please stand. 753. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. Why there are other living about us never molested though in the wrong father alone will know all about it father alone will understand why so cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we're understand it all by and by faithful till death said i love in master a few more days to labor and wait towards the road who will then seem as nothing uh, as we sweep through the beautiful gate father alone will know all about it Cause Father alone will understand why. So cheer up my brother, live in the sunshine. We understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We understand it all by and by. Father alone will know all about it. Cause Father alone will understand why. 
So cheer up, my brother, start living the sunshine. Uh, we understand it all by and by. Let us pray. To the living creator of the universe, the whole world, and everything that there is in it, we pause for the cause to say thank you this morning. There are so many things that we have to be thankful for. Thankful for you being the only God, the only living God. Thanking you for your son, Jesus the Christ, whom you sent because you love the world. Thanking you for the Holy Spirit that you sent to guide the apostles to write your holy word, that we might read about it and know how to save our souls from eternal damnation. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the power of your word, which is able to save our souls, but not only to save it, but to sustain it. Right. Amen. Right. And Father, we come on behalf of many members, whether it's, it's members of your body or, or their family members who are suffering from the ills of hell. Uh, uh, Sister Bullock's brother, uh, Sister Rosa Bullock's son, who are having problems with their hearts as well as Brother Jennings, and we pray for Brother Mike Mansfield, who is going through a, a, a plethora of trauma in his life. And Father, we know that there are many others among us who are suffering with the vicissitudes of life, who are traumatized by the things of this world, trials, troubles, and tribulations. Mm -hmm. But Father, we know that you are the God who can be touched by our infirmities. Amen that you sent Jesus to, to show us who you are. Mm -hmm. And Father, we are thankful that you are a God who will not live in peace with sin. Mm -hmm. We know that's true because you sent Jesus mm -hmm. to die for our sins. Yes. Yes. Be with us, Father, and bless this congregation that gathers here uh, each Lord's Day to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, for all those who are on our prayer list, we continue to pray and lift them up while we glorify Jesus the Christ and while every saint is edified when we come through those doors. Bless us and bless the preacher man and his family and bless each family that's represented here. We thank you for life and its abundance that we have only through Christ. And Father, we know that Jesus is coming. We pray that we all might be ready to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Be with us and go with us through the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We, we, have, we have one song in the scripture reading and a prayer at this time. Please be seated. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wait till the immortal strength. Angels will rapture announce it, shepherds will wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe that? Wonderful story of love. 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 Though you are far away. Wonderful story of love, still he doth call today, calling from Calvary's mountain, down from the crystal bright fountain, 
Father, thank you again for another glorious gathering. We come praying that our hearts and minds be open in preparation for this word so that we can go and share the good news with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, 915, song invitation, 915, song invitation, then 882, song for the message. I'll have it. No tears in heaven, no, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There will be no sadness, all will be gladness. When we shall join that happy band, no tears in heaven fair, no tears, no tears of fair, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears in heaven fair, no tears, no tears of fair, no tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting. Waiting up yonder, where we shall spend and in this day. There will the Savior, we'll be forever. Where no more sorrow can dismay. There'll be no tears in heaven's 
fair. No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears in heaven's fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Some morning younger will cease to ponder or things his life and cross No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown on him. There be no tears in heaven's fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven's will be no more. And there be no tears in heaven's fair. No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown no tears in heaven's fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Amen. As we look at the subject this morning, dealing with temptation, we all are going to be tempted. Jesus himself was tempted, but he did not give in. And so we look at Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse number 36. Then come a Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Jesus' hour is at hand. He's about to die on the cross of Calvary. He at this point, it's at a point in his life where the hour has come. I often think about even in our lives, the hour in our lives will come not to go on the cross because we take up our cross daily and we follow him. But the hour will come when life will not be anymore unless the Lord shall come first. And so Jesus, he is going through a lot. Like oftentimes we're going through a lot and people around us have no idea of what we're going through. Jesus at this point, he's going to ask his disciples to just wait here until he take uh, some of those disciples off and they pray, to pray. I think about in our life, often we we're so concerned about things, but we don't pray enough. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. It is here in verse number 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. There are times in our lives when we are sorrowful and we're very heavy. Here, According to Hebrews, the Hebrew writer, he writes this, that a person will is not to, into effect in Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 16 through 17, until the testator dies. Your will is no good until you die. It is so sad that the young child of Luke 15, the prodigal son, he said, Father, give me my inheritance. He wanted his inheritance before his father died. It's almost like saying, I wish you were dead because I want what's coming to me. But see, the New Testament would not be in effect until Jesus dies. He, he had to die. He not only died for our sins, the sins of the world, but he also died to bring about a new covenant the one that we're a part of. That's why we're a part of the New Testament church. We are a part of the glorious church, the one that Jesus established. When he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And he tells Peter in Matthew 16, verse number 16 and following, 
Get you behind me saying, why? Because she, uh, Peter said, no, don't go to the cross. And Jesus was saying to him, I must go to the cross. And here, Jesus, he's at that point where he's about to go to the cross. It is here in verse number 39, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. No one wants to suffer. No one wants to die on the cross. But Jesus is saying, not my will, but your will. So, so many things in our lives, sometimes we, we, we hate to face. We don't want to face situations, but we know we can face it with the Lord. We know if the Lord is with us, we can face it. And, and here Jesus, he's, he's about to face the cross, and he's going to say later on, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because Jesus takes on the sins of the world, and, and God cannot be connected with sin. Jesus takes on our sin. But he did not forsake him because he raised him from the dead on the third day. And he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto them, to Peter, what could ye not, wh what, could ye not watch with me one hour? We fall in temptation all time when we're tired. They were tired. And they, they fell in temptation, and we'll see shortly what Jesus says to them. Watch in verse number 41, and this is a lesson of the hour. Watch in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 41. Watch and do what? Pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the body, the flesh is weak. We are to watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. Temptation has three t categories. Sin has three categories, uh, three categories of sin. You will find these categories and look at 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 15. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not where? Is not in him. You can't embrace the world and God at the same time. God made the world, but the world he's talking about here are the things of the world. He breaks it down in verse number 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God about it forever. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Now everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, turn into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth what? The will of my Father which is in heaven. Here's the three categories of sin. They're found in verse number 16. You might want to mark your Bibles there. First, John chapter 2, verse number 16. It is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We see all of this in Genesis chapter 3. Remember when Adam and Eve was tempted by Satan? They was tempted, but keep in mind, I said, it's, we all would be tempted, but the fact is we are not to fall, we're not to give in. Look at Matthew chapter 3, verse number 6. We see these three categories of sin here in Matthew 3, verse number 6. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, Lust of the eyes. You know, we can sin by sight. He says, the Bible says in verse number six, in Genesis chapter three, verse number six, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, lust, pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. These are the three categories of sin. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Not only does Satan get us when we're tired, Satan get us at our weakest point. He get us at our weakest point because we see in Matthew chapter 4, look at Matthew chapter 4, Jesus He's tempted by Satan. 
And these three categories of sin, they play out even here. In Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The devil, he actually, he tempts us to bring out the worst in us. God tests us to bring out the best in us. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then he doesn't stop there. Then the devil taketh him up unto the uh, holy city and, sit, and sitteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. And as the pride of life, all those things lurking at Jesus. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast, in verse number 6, Matthew chapter 4, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dost thy feet against a stone. Jesus, he will answer with the scripture all the time, it is written, we must answer the same way. It is written, it is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And, and then again, the, the devil, he doesn't stop that. He taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and, and show of him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee. <laughs> Satan will promise you something but cannot deliver. All these things will I give thee, he says. And then, of course, and he said, all this thing will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Jesus responds this way. It's so beautiful in verse number 10. Then said Jesus unto him, get ye hence, Satan. And we need to do the same thing. Get ye hence, Satan, when we're tempted. James chapter 4, verse number 7 and following, it says, resist Satan and he will flee from you. For it is written again, Thou shalt worship who the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Where are you in reference to temptation? I want to show you this morning that we're all not necessarily tempted in the same way. Not only that, we, we all have different temperaments. We have different temperaments, and we've been brought up in different backgrounds. I know when I was in Germany, um, we would be on the train or bus and people over there drank beer like they drank water. They drank beer like we drank soda. And you would smell beer on, on the bus or train almost everybody's breath. They were brought up in that environment. But see, when one obeys the gospel, no matter what culture you have been brought up in, you must obey what God has told you according to the word of God. And so here, we see that they were tempted. They're, they're sources of temptation. The world, as we see Jesus was tempted about, he says, uh, Satan says, I cast you off this pinnacle and I give you the world in a sense. Then that's the flesh to turn stones into bread as he tells Jesus. And then the devil wanted Jesus to worship him. Wanted Jesus to worship him. He wants you to worship him. This very hour, this very moment in time. You know, you often see the sign with Uncle Sam with the big hat. Probably me going to the military. Um, I, I would see that commercial all the time. You'll see it on signboards. Uncle Sam with the hat. Uh, they give this image and then they have the stars going around the, the hat and then he points at you he points at you he said uncle sam wants you that's what satan is saying to him to us herbert moore i want you and i'm going to be on my job until you leave this world <laughs> he is as a rowing lion seeking whom he may devour first peter chapter 5 verse number 8 and then sometimes 
we stray, we, you know, we, we're strong in the Lord and we're able to stand for a period of time. And then it's like the Michael Jackson song, if you will, I want you back. Dun, 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 dun. I want you back. <laughs> ooh, 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 I want you back. Satan wants you back. He does. And, and he's going he, to he's gonna tempt you and tempt you and tempt you. Now, now notice what James says about this temptation. Look at James chapter 1, verse number 12 and following. Look at James chapter 1, verse 12 and following. Satan is going to tempt you in every way. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, he is going to tempt you in every way. James 1, verse number 12, Blessed is the man that endureth, that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. See, that's the end results of those that stay faithful to the end. We will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them, here goes, that love him. John chapter 14, verse number 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Look at verse number 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Remember I said, Satan tempt us to bring out the worst in us. God tests us to bring out the best in us. See, this is what happens when you do not yield to temptation. When you overcome that particular sin, or that temptation that you've been yielding to, and you know you're weak, in reference to that particular sin, you become stronger the next time. You become stronger and stronger and stronger. Each time you say, no, Satan, I'm not going to let you get me that way anymore. And this is what Paul says, Second Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 11 and following. Paul said, we know his devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. Satan can get you on, on the smoothest situation possible. But when, when, when you give in, when you give in, then you become weaker. When you don't give in, Rhonda, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. And we need to keep that in mind. Because dealing with temptation, listen to what James says in James chapter 1. Listen to what he says in verse number 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, as a process of sin... Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. He said, do not err, my brethren. Don't err. Do your best not to err. Now, life is a long battle with dealing with fighting against sin. It's a long battle. You, you, you feel like you, you conquered today, but like Satan did Jesus, Satan left him. This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter 4. It, it, it records the same uh, three temptations that Jesus dealt with. Satan left him. The angels ministered to him, but Satan left him for a season. You know, you, you may have won this battle. It's a battle all the time, but Satan is going to come back. But when he comes back, you need to put on the whole armor of God. You should have the whole armor of God once again on. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10 and following, do all you can to stand, put on the whole armor of God, for you are rising not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's a battle that goes on all the time. Jesus says in Matthew 26, our Bible text, verse number 41, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 15 through 16, the flesh is fighting against the spirit. Sometimes we let the, fle the, the flesh win out. A lot of people letting the flesh win out even now. Even when it comes to coming to worship. Sometimes they're letting the flesh win out. Let Satan win out. But see, God wins out when we are walking in the light, when we're walking by faith and doing what God will have us to do. You know, even, you know, and you all know, um, 
the bulletin, as I sent, we sometimes let Satan win out even when it comes to choosing to give to God. Remember, I, I mentioned in, in Psalm 50, verse number one and five, everything belongs to God. <laughs> it's almost like a, a child, when they're younger, they're not working at anything. Everything comes from the parent. And um, if they give back to you, they just gave back what you have given them. <laughs> Everything belongs to God. And when we give back to him, we're just giving a portion back as to what he has given to us. Our oldest daughter, Teresa, used to uh, trick her sometime. We would give her an allowance when she was younger. She was the only child then. And she's going to the store, and uh, she's come out without us knowing it and bring us something. She said, since y'all been so good to me, I'm buying you all something. What about God? What have we given back to him? Everything belongs to him. He not only wants our finances, but he wants our talent. He wants our time. We need to take time and be holy. That's why on the first day of the week, God wants us to just stop everything. And let this be the first day of the week. Let, let us come and give him our first and best. Because the world rushes on. The song says, take time to be holy. The world rushes on. We need to take time to pray. Take time to thank God. Thank, take time to magnify his name. Because God is a good God. But life is a battle with sin. We have to kill sin and stop sin in its tracks. First Corinthians 15, verse number 33, evil communication ruin, ruins good manners. Yes, to temptation increases the power of sin. When we say yes to temptation, when we give in, it, it increases the power of sin. It, sin becomes powerful in our lives. But when we say no, it decreases the power. It decreases the power. You know, one of the most powerful words, Brother Brooks, in the English language is N-O. Is N-O. To say no, especially saying no to Satan. Sometimes you have to learn to say no to your friends. No, no to your family member. Because they may have you doing something that you don't want to do it or shouldn't be doing it. It could be a burden that they should bear in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 1 through 5, where they should bear their own burden. It should be a burden that they should bear. Here in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 41, Jesus does not say, watch and pray that you will not be tempted. You will be tempted. But that you do not fall. That you do not fall to temptation. You know, you're not tempted, you're not tempted to, to buy a product as bad as if you're in person doing it. If you're, you're trying to buy a car, for example, and you're on the phone like now, people are buying cars on the phone, through the internet, that salesperson cannot pressure you as bad as you're in person. They looking in your face. <laughs> Sin is the same way. When you close up to sin, it's, it's, you're more prone to give in. So uh, you can resist more, but face to face, it's hard to do. We see this even in the workplace. Even as we worked at the post office, uh, hundreds of people working in the same big area, men and women working together. Now, if you're working from your home, you're not tempted. You're working with teens, but you're not tempted. You don't see them. But when you're there in person, it's a different story. And, you know, it's something, well, I don't do this. I haven't done that. Well, maybe you have not had the opportunity to see it in that way. <laughs> maybe your temperament is, is not in that fashion. What you're seeing, look at David's temperament. David was an impulsive person when he sees Bathsheba. He impulsively wanted her. You know, he saw the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, pride of life. And it felt like since, since he was at his particular position, in his 
took up a position, he can do, he can get and do anything. Uh, there are a lot of people in Hollywood feels they feel that way, and people in high office feel that way. They can do anything. They're not limited to anything, but that's not true. We must all control ourselves. We must all temper ourselves. Because right is right and wrong is wrong, no matter who you are. The, um, you may have not experienced a certain thing, and you may have been strong in this particular thing all of your life. My sister can tell you this. She's here now where we grew up in a household where our mother and father never brought alcohol beverages in the home. We, we never... We, we would never see our mother and father drink, never saw them drink. Do you not know that caused us not to have a desire to drink? I had friends, uh, even in my teenage years, that offered me uh, alcohol. I did not drink one drop, even though uh, I was, you know, away from home. But it was something about being brought up in a certain way that's why you bring your children up in the way that they should go. Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 6. And when they get old, they will not depart from them. You must be the best example, though. If you're drinking and carrying on in the house, what made them not want to do the same thing? You remember that commercial? This is a young boy starts smoking, and, and the father gets so upset. He said, why are you doing this? He said, Dad, because I saw you doing it. <laughs> Ouch. But, but one thing about it, okay, I did good. I went through high school without drinking. I went through high, I'm all the way without drinking. Alcohol all around me. But then again, I joined this R&B band while I was in high school. And, and a year later, after joining that, joining that R&B band, there was one day in which one of my friends said, man, come on, drink a little bit of this wine, this Boom Farms wine. Only Brother Wilson remember the Boom Farm wine. He said, drink a little bit of boom foam wine. It tastes like Kool-Aid. And it did taste like Kool-Aid. And, and I started drinking a little bit, a little bit at a time. And then at that point, I became a drinker. Then there was one day when there was no wine while we were playing in the band, and someone had some beer. So I said, I don't want that nasty beer, and I started drinking beer. OK, now all this came about because I was in that environment. That's what sin does. You don't need to get in that environment. We tell our children all the time, don't get in that environment. Evil communication ruins good manners. I was in the wrong environment. I, at that point, I wasn't strong enough. I yield to temptation. I gave in. But thank be to God that about four years later, at 23 years old, I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, November 6, 1976, and I stopped cold turkey drinking anything and have not drank at, to this point. And I may have to back up and not have not drank uh, to this point because uh, that night quail have a little alcohol in it. That night quail. <laughs> but I have not drank to this point. One turning to Proverbs, look at Proverbs chapter 20. Listen, listen what, Pro, listen, listen what Solomon says. Look what Solomon said, Proverbs chapter 20. Look at verse number one. Wine is a mark, a strong drink is raging, and whosoever de deceive thereby is not wise. So you may be tempted to drink, but the Bible says it's not wise. But holy preacher, the Bible doesn't speak about not drinking, speak about drunkenness. It does in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse number 9 and following, all drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. But you can't get drunk until you start drinking. And so I don't want anything to do with it. I know my limitations. You may, you may, not, you may not be limited like me, but I know my limitations. See, that's the thing about our temperament. We must know who we are. We must know our limitations. Look at Psalm, look, look at um, Psalm 139. Look at Psalm 139. Because see, when I know my limitation, I know that Satan cannot take me but so far. He cannot take me but so far because I know my limitation. 
I know also if I go back and drink one drink, I may be like Second Peter chapter 2, verse number 20. This is what Peter says. He says, when you go back into the world, it's like a dog returning to its vomit. I don't want to turn, return to that. If it, I may have drank two drinks a day then, I might go back and start drinking three a day and lose control. Oh, don't you know, preacher, it's a stimulant. It is a stimulant initially. It stimulates you, but then again, it becomes a depression once it wears off. And it's a toxin. You become intoxicated. The, 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 the body cannot take it. I want you to notice Psalm 139. Look at Psalm 139, verse number 23. This is what, this is what the writer says. Psalm 139, verse number 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. We need to search our hearts. Whatever wickedness in us, whatever secret sin, Psalm 19, verse number 11 and following, whatever secret sin that we have, we need to get it out of the way. We need to stop it. Stop it in its tracks. We're drawn away, James said, James 1, verse number 12 and following, from our own lust and entice. And see if there be any wicked way in me, he says in verse 24, and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, help us to be led in the way of everlasting. But drinking may not be your problem. David, he had a problem by being unfaithful, by warning someone else's wife, getting her pregnant, and thought he had gotten away with it. But God knows everything. He knows everything. He knows your temperament. He, he, he knows, and you need to know you. You need to start learning who you are. Jonah, he was an introvert person. He was an introverted person. Well, how do we know that? Because in Jonah chapter 3, we, we see how he was upset with God that God had saved Nineveh after he preached to Nineveh. Jonah, it's not about you. And he was, he was outside of the city, soaking in his sin. That's the pride of life. Remember the three categories of sin? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And that's the pride of life. And then it is a, we can sin sometimes even when some people are just so cautious. They, they, you, know, you know, they're not willing to make any decision. They're so cautious about life and they don't go too far in life because they're so cautious. But I read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7, we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. See, our righteousness is not just based on us being safe. It's not just based on us being safe. Oh, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. But our righteousness is doing, doing the will of God. Our righteousness, here goes, is based on Romans chapter 4, verse number 17 and following. Abraham, his right, he was, it was accounted to him righteousness, his faith, by him stepping out on faith. That's righteousness. So, so a person that's so cautious and don't want to do this or that, that can, that can become sinful also. That's a temptation also. They don't want to make any decision. And then there's the cool guy, or there's the cool woman that they're not hot nor warm. They're just cool. And we must be careful about that one also. And, and remember Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said, I'd rather for you be hot or cold. I'd rather for you be hot or cold. Not to be just laid back, because God has given us every, all things pertaining to life and godliness, and with, with his exceeding great promises. He has promised us so much. We don't step out on faith like we should. We're not enjoying the promises of God like we should because we're so cautious and we're so cool. We're so laid back. But in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 41, we are to watch. Watch, learn to be a student of your own soul and learn to be a student of your own heart. Do you know you yet? To yourself be true, right? I know what tempts me. I know what food tempts me. I know smelling certain types of food, 
uh, how it makes me want to eat that food. <laughs> and I know how I must be disciplined to make sure I eat the right thing, exercise, and do those things that will build my body up and, be, and live long as possible to serve God. Because we're all earthen vessels. Each of you are so important to God. You're so important to God. When you are tired, you're more vulnerable uh, in, 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 in any situation. Uh, you're vulnerable to sin. You're vulnerable sometimes to say the wrong thing. You know, when you get fed up with people, you're vulnerable to say the wrong thing. That's why you must be kind one with another. You must be long-suffering with people, striving together. Even as Christians, when we see other Christians fall, sometimes we, we, I can't believe you have fallen because all these years you've been studying God's word and, and I looked at you as being faithful to the Lord. But then the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 1, Therefore, my brethren, anyone get overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such one in spirit of what? Meanness. No, in the spirit of meekness. Consider yourself, lest you also be tempted. Lest you also be tempted. We need to stop criticizing people when they fall. We need to be trying to pick them up because one day you may fall. You may fall the same way. So we need to watch and pray uh, when, when, even when people are hostile toward us. We need to be careful. We need to be loving like Jesus, more like Jesus as we live our life. Then we need to study the past experience in our lives. Study the past experiences in our lives. Look at how sin has gained success over you. And sin can, if you don't watch it, it would gain success over you. It, it could be uh, you, you get angry quicker when you should be growing in the Lord and you should be more meek and humble. Sin can become successful over you. And if you watch and don't pray, you must do both. You must watch and pray. Because watching and not praying is like a doctor. He diagnoses you uh, with a certain illness, and then he gives you a prescription to be filled, and you don't take that prescription to the pharmacist. <laughs> See, you've been diagnosed with something. You're watching, and, but... But prayer brings it into, takes it to the pharmacist. You, you act on that particular situation. And you pray because your flesh is weak. Your flesh is weak. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 12. He says, take heed lest you fall. Take heed lest you fall. But hold it, Paul. Uh, you don't understand. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verses uh, 10 through 12. We would say to Paul, you don't understand, Paul. You, 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 you are not in my shoes. You are not in this situation with me. You have not been tempted like this. I am in an environment that I'm tempted in more ways than one. You don't understand, Paul. Listen to what Paul says. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 10. He says, in verse number 9, Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempt and were destroyed of the serpent, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and ye destroyed of the destroyer. And then he's, he goes on to say, now all these things happen uh, for, for them, for an example, example for us, that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. See, God has given us everything we need to look back. Old Testament written for our learning so we can see how those people were tempted. They gave in, and what happened in the end? Look at verse number 12. Wherefore, let him that think if he standeth, take heed lest he fall. See, say not, not only he tempts us at our lowest point, he tempts us at our highest point all the time. When you feel like, you know, you have the best part of your life. You can be tempted in any, at any time in any way. Here it goes. Therefore, no temptation taken you such as common to man. In verse number 13, First Corinthians 10, verse number 13. In other words, don't think you are in this alone. You're not in this alone. 
You know, like our parents, I'll say, well, I've been there, I've done that. I know what you're going through. And Paul says, hey, no matter what temptation it is, we've all been there and done that. You know, Ten Commandments is filled with the six, last six commandments, your relationship uh, with your fellow man. And it talks about obeying your parents, on and on. And then it talks about don't steal. You know, some people are tempted to steal. Some people grow up. I have some friends that they grew up stealing from a child. <laughs> and then as they have gotten older, they're still stealing in more ways than one. They, they, they grew up that way. Now, listen, listen to what it says. There have no temptation, but has searched as common to man, but God is faithful. He's faithful. He's not only faithful, he who is willing not to suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. Remember I said, even the Israelites, after being in captivity for 400 years, God knew when to pull them out. God knows when you're going to crack. And, and he, he, he actually knows even when temptation is before you, if you listen to him, if you see what God is doing in your life, look at, verse, look at that same verse, verse number 13. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will, what, what, what will he do, Paul? But will, with the temptation, also make what? A way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. God is able to provide a way of escape, an escape. But sometimes we don't look for it. No matter what it is, he's able to do that. And so as we close, <clears throat> how do you view your temptation? Temptation, of course, is a desire to do something wrong or unwise. To do something wrong or unwise. Let me say this to you. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2, the Bible says we are to lay aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us. Sometimes temptation just may be an unwise thing to do. Hebrew writer says lay aside every sin and weight. Sometimes it might be a weight that you don't need to take on. We need to learn how to say no. Let us close with Jude, Jude uh, 24, Jude 24. Listen to what Jude says in Jude 24. This is prior to the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. In Jude 24, the Bible says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. See, God is able to keep us from falling. But if we do fall, First John chapter 1, verse number 7. We have Jesus Christ, who is our mediator, who is our counselor. He will forgive us if we do fall. And he will wash away our sins. So unto him, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Do you want to keep from falling? Just embrace Jesus. Jesus, Jesus will see you through. And if you do fall, he's there to catch you. He's there to catch you and pick you back up. But if you be like the lady that I've fallen and I can't get up, Satan loves that. You can get up by the power of Jesus. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we can do that. You have heard the word this, this morning, believe in all your heart, repent of your sins, confess Christ and be baptized. Once you're baptized, you may fall, but you can get back up. And you can fight temptation no matter what it is. It may be an individual that's causing you to be tempted. It may be a certain food. Or it may be a certain drink. Or it could be a, a number of things. Remember the three categories of sin, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. If you can just know that God, God knows 
everything before it happens. And, and, and God is there for you. God loves you. And so when you leave this day, uh, uh, when this lesson is over, I trust, hope, and pray that every time you're faced with temptation, you'll remember that God will, and, uh, he will allow an escape. But you have to look for it. And you have to be willing to say, no, say, not anymore. I once, I want, you, you once got me that way, but not anymore. I'm going to move forward with strength. I'm going to move forward toward God. Amen. And so we stand and sing the imitation song. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some others to win. Fight manfully on world or mansion to do. Look ever to Jesus. Jesus will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Come first, strengthen and keep you. Jesus is willing to hate you. Jesus will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, come first, strengthen and keep you. Jesus is willing to hate you. Jesus will carry you through. You not to temptation for yielding is sin. His victory will help you, some others to win. By manfully on world our passion so do. Look ever to Jesus, Jesus will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, come for strength and, and keep you. Jesus is willing to aid you, Jesus will carry you through. strengthened to carry on with our life in Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the precious soul, Rhonda Burke. Pray you'll be with her and her family. Forgive her her sin. And we pray, Lord, that you be with Destin, partner, Jay Washington, and her family, the entire family, as they go through life and struggle. And we pray, Lord, that you with them we all encourage one another and that we will rely on one another in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream. Oh, from every mountain. In
first of the week, in which, in which we commune with Jesus. I have death, burial, and resurrection. And that's 20 verse 7. We see that we meet on the first of the week. And as it reads, now on the first of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul read the part the next day, spoke to them, and continued his speech until midnight. Also in Matthew 26, verse 26 through 28, we see that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. And it reads, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and saying, take, eat, this is my body. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come together on this first of the week, saying praise to your name and give you the honor of what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for this bread, represent your body on the cross. We will examine ourselves and take the memory of the King kept in sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Then he took the cup. He blessed it. Gave strength and gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for many for the remission of sin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that represents your son's blood on the cross. We pray, O oh Lord, that we examine ourselves and that we're taking the matter of Jesus at my sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Also on the first of the week, we are commanded to give. For in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, it says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the church of Galatia. Even so, you must do also. On the first of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, stone up, that he may prosper, that there will be no collection when I come. Also in chapter 9, verse 67, it reads, And this I say, he which soweth sparingly will reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as the purpose in the heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As we give, you can give as you go out to the forum, or you can give on online app or uh, app uh, give a fire. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us more than we ask. And we thank you most of all for the life you give us in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, we give back to you. We pray, Lord, that the things that we give, not only our money, but our talent, that will be done in a decent order, orderly and from our heart. We pray, Lord, that we give, that we use for the upkeep of our King, and most of the spirit of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. 
Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, shelter in the time of storm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that we have blessed us with, that we can come together and worship you with a matter that we can step outside and stay in truth. Pray all of the things that were said, that the things that were said to us in life, that we may go out and teach others what God says the Lord. Pray all of the things that those who are mentioned, those who are sick, those who are having surgery, those who are lost loved ones, continue to be with all of us this week as we go out to do uh, this week. You pray for God and the rest of us to bring us back to the next point of time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.